are at the Bumbershoot Music and Arts Festival in Seattle, Washington, speaking today with Ken Stringfellow. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. So I understand you uh, formed the Posies back in the late 80s, and you guys had a, kind of a hit record before even playing as a full band, correct? It's true. Uh, uh, we made it. Uh, uh, we did a DIY record that we, we made in a, a home studio in 1988. We, we released that as a cassette, a homemade cassette, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, we took it around to a few record stores and dropped a few uh, off at a few ra radio stations. And really, I mean, in, in a matter of a few days, uh, we suddenly heard ourselves on the radio. We never imagined they would even listen to our tape, but yeah. you know, we had a couple songs that get, were played a lot, and it just kept growing and growing. This is all through the spring and summer of 1988. We didn't have a, a, a live band yet. We just, you know, we just caught us totally off guard. I mean, so it was, was it, great, though. Was it pretty intimidating to have your first performance as a live band, given there was so much hype with you guys on the radio and everything? Uh, no, it was not intimidating at all. We were just really excited. Perfect. Yeah. So today you're performing with Big Star, uh, mm -hmm. Big Star's third. Yeah. Um, how did you begin working with that project? Well, um, you know, it wasn't playing a, a very um, heartfelt and melodic guitar pop with lots of vocal harmonies. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't long before older and wiser people that we knew uh, introduced us to the music of Big Star, and we became instant, rabid, diehard fans and started covering <laughs> their songs. This would be, be really, you know, 1988, 1989 is when, when we first started hearing those records. They got reissued on CD after being out of print. Um, and, and we just were so into it. Um, and this got us on the radar of Jody Stevens, uh, the drummer of Big Star, um, who will be performing with us tonight. Um, and we, he, you know, we made our fandom very clear and he became a very much a fan of ours and a supporter of ours and we became friends, etc. So when uh, the singer of Big Star, Alex Chilton, who, who passed away four years ago, uh, after many years of saying, no, I'm not really interested in that music anymore, agreed to do a reunion performance. Uh, by that time, already some people in the band had died or long moved on from sure. music. So uh, at Jody's suggestion, really, um, John and I uh, were asked to round out the, the empty chairs um, and played with uh, Alex and Jody as Big Star for 17 years from that point on. That was in 1993. Um, and, and so up until Alex died in 2010, we, we played all over the world as Big Star. So tonight's uh, performance is pretty special. There's quite a few people joining. Can you talk a little bit about um, what the plans are for this evening? Yes, yeah, so in general, what Big Star's third is, is exactly uh, as advertised. It is yeah. a performance of Big Star's third album, which is a very haunting and beautiful, uh, very diverse album with like orchestral parts and rock parts and experimental parts. And we, we play the album note for note. Um, Jody Stevens, who's the only living member of Big Star, is, is with us. And then we have a core band um, that plays these shows with uh, Chris Stamey, a legendary songwriter from the DBs, Mike Mills from R.E.M., uh, myself, uh, Mitch Easter, record producer and musician. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody right now, but no let's just say that there's all those. And then each show we have special guests, and we've done this all over the world. So we've had everybody from Ray Davies to Cat Power to Kurt Vile to Sharon Van Etten, um, to Jeff Tweedy, uh, to the Yola Tango, Ira and Georgia, uh, etc. We, you know, join us. So every show is different special guests, um, and so here at Bumbershoot tonight we'll have, uh, in addition to Mike Mills from R.M., Peter Buck from R.M. playing uh, guitar and mandolin, we'll have Mike McCready from Pearl Jam uh, singing, I do believe, and playing guitar. Excellent. Uh, Steve Wynn. Not the casino owner, but the uh, legendary <laughs> songwriter from the Dream Syndicate uh, will be singing with us. Uh, John Auer, my counterpart in the Posies, uh, will be singing with us. Um, uh, Steve Berlin from Los Lobos playing some sax solos. Matthew Cause from Natasurf singing with us. Uh, once again, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but that's, that yeah. gives you the gist of it. Well, it sounds very impressive, yeah. and we're definitely looking forward to seeing it. It's that a very magical season. show, and let's not forget, of course, uh, there's an orchestra, because the album is very orchestral, yeah. and we have the Seattle Rock Orchestra uh, with us in there, too, and they're amazing. Perfect. It sounds like a pretty magical bumbershoot experience. So definitely looking Touching, forward to it. Touch wood, but let's yeah. hope it's good. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's some kind of plastic. <laughs> um, so you and John have been performing together uh, for almost for over 30 years, I believe? Yeah, well, I mean, we started playing in bands together before the Posies when we were... Uh, actually, when I first started playing with John, he was still in junior high school. 
uh, in wow. middle school. Uh, we're talking exactly 30 years ago, 1984. Holy smokes. Yeah. So um, that's that's a musical relationship that's longer than a lot of people's marriages. Yeah, um, some longer than Jimi Hendrix's life. Sure. Kurt Cobain's life. Do you have any yeah. tips for longevity as a duo? Um, you know, no. I mean, I, I think <laughs> that it's just... We've done all the things that you can do, like, you know, we've, like, not spoken to each other and sure. not, and figured we had, you know, said, I'm never playing with that jerk again, you know, this kind yeah, of thing. We've yeah, had yeah. all of that. So I think really the, the, the good news is, is that the, the music just keeps on trucking, you know, like yeah. when you, when you make records that people like, and, and we've been blessed that people have not only had the chance to hear our records, but people have liked them over the years. Um, they keep that music alive and you know the music has its own momentum so after a while you go okay yeah, right, sure, you know, I'll play sure, that sure. music and then you find you know uh, as time goes on you know whatever things that you know John and I may have disagreed about um, in the past it's a little gets harder to remember and you just go well you know whatever yeah so hypothetically if I were to say that you and John were the uh the Ross and Rachel, if you will, of Northwest music. Is that uh, something you would reject or maybe? Uh, I've never seen the show. Uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I'd say we're more like the the Seinfeld and Kramer. Got it. Kind of vibe. <laughs> Perfect. So as a producer, you've worked with um, bands from all over the world mm -hmm. playing in multiple different genres. Um, what do you look for uh, in, a, in an artist before taking on a new project? Oh gosh, as far as a producer, I mean, they, they they tend to look for me yeah. and and that often suffices i mean if they're if they're so interested uh -huh. you know then and they really want to make that happen to work with me then you know i'm i'm interested in why they're so interested and if that if they've gone through the trouble i'm you know i'm i'm extremely committed you know so when i see someone who has commitment to their project or whatever um you, you know i'm that's good enough for me i mean commitment says it all for me i mean i Talent is really a product of commitment. You know, you, you, if you're committed, you, you work hard and you put the time in, yeah. whether you're a natural Mozart or not, you, sure. you, you put the time in and you're committed. And that, you know, I mean, I, I respect that and I want to nurture, nurture that in people. And, and, you know, if they're really into it, I'm going to help them find their way, you know. I'm like the guide, really, yeah. you know. I've heard in a lot of interviews, uh, because you work with so many different projects, mm -hmm. um, people will ask, oh, is it ever difficult to separate one sound from another when you're trying to come up with songs, whatever, and you often say that it's really not, that you yeah. seem to find the perfect thing for the moment. Um, that is pretty impressive. Is that a skill that you had to develop, or does it really just come naturally to you? Probably a little both. Okay. Uh, you know, I probably worked on that. I have, you know, really good focusing skills that, that may be, you know, it's kind of a there's a flip side of like the OCD kind of world that uh, you know sure. that touches me a little bit that that allows you to you know focus in on things really deeply I just you know I, I, and that's not said lightly you know that, that yeah. I'm not making fun of anyone's condition including my own um, <laughs> but also just um, you know I've had a little bit of training from people wiser than I about how to maintain yourself staying in the moment and that's what really all it is, is attention in the moment, you know, pushes out the distraction. So it really isn't weird to jump from one thing to the other because you just train yourself to focus in. But I think I have a good natural focusing ability that I've just tried to push up too. But I think anybody could do it, you know. Yeah. So a lot of your albums feature um, tons of different guest artists mm -hmm. uh, from, I believe, Margaret Cho you worked with at one point. Yeah, she's on my last album. Yeah, yeah, Broken Social Scene, some artists from Broken Social Scene. Yeah, so. Lisa uh, Love Singer sang on the last Posies album. Yeah. yeah. So is there any specific reasoning behind uh, creating kind of a, a giant cast of characters, if you will, for, for your body of work? Oh, I'm just restless. You know, I, yeah. lo I, I love to, you know, uh, it, I learn from people, too. I mean, everybody's got their different approach and different flavor. and. Uh, that is something I really enjoy, just seeing what everybody's vibe is and, you know, learning from their experiences and sharing mine. And that's, music is, after all, the, the original social media. It, really, it sure. really has been the most important communication tool. It out, it's far outweighs writing because it's been around for much longer. So, yes. um, you know, it just, I think growing a large community of, like-minded souls and even not like-minded souls you know like and just learning from 
different experiences is a is my major pastime really. Excellent. So it sounds like you have a, a very busy month. Uh, right after Bumbershoot, you're putting on a benefit for Music Airs uh, at the end of this week. Par participating in, yeah. Yes, participating. It, uh, um, there's an artist named Mike Lucero yeah. who's actually, it, he's really, he's put it together. Um, but I'm definitely involved. Um, I've written a song with him that's going to be on this album that, that is part of the project. The project's called FM Collective. Mm -hmm. uh, and a whole bunch of different local musicians uh, are involved. People from Hey Marseille, Portugal, The Man, uh, Heart. I mean, it's like, it's quite an interesting project. You can read all about it at fmcollective.org. Um, and then we're presenting, even though we were just working on the album last week, uh, we're going to present it next week, this week, um, incredibly enough. Yeah. So uh, with a, a couple of concerts, that's September 5th at the Columbia City Theater and September 6th, Friday, Saturday, at the Kirkland Performance Center, um, and this is—I don't—I don't even know how many of these artists are going to be involved. I think there's like a lot of people involved yeah. that day. <laughs> but I will play some of my solo stuff, the song that we worked on together with Mike, and a whole bunch of other people doing their things. That Mike's been collaborating with all kinds of people for this project. Perfect. Well, it sounds like you're big, a big community builder, both with today's show and with what's coming up next week. It's quite a family, the Big Star Third thing. Yeah. You know, it's quite interesting to bring the Big Star world that I was part of and the REM world that I was mm -hmm. part of and the, uh, the the Posies world that I'm part of and bring those all. It's all under one roof somehow now, you yeah. know, and, it's, and the roof is getting bigger. Yes. So. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. My and uh, good luck with the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Ken Stringfellow performing with Big Stars Third today and you're watching Grammy Pro.